my name is Eve the Weave. Like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, my phone had cut off, so I'm on the other one now. Honey, it's getting deep. Because I want to see all the paperwork from this hospital visit. She got too many hospital visits. Let's hear about it. I'm not going to show you the footage is because people like the fucking flag. And I ain't got time for that. Not today, not tomorrow, not never. And to answer a question you've been asking. Here's the investigative report. Sure, Mercedes with what she discovered. She can't deny the pure joy that jumped off the face in the pictures that have been the public eye since her disappearance. Those were perhaps the happier days. The paperwork months. is crazy, y'all. Documents we obtained from the Harris County clerk show that last August, the Department of Family and Protective Services received a report alleging physical abuse and neglectful supervision of Malia. She was living with her mother, Brittany Bowens, and stepfather, Darian Benz, at the time. The state got involved after Malia's mother brought her to the hospital with a head injury. Doctors had to do surgery to remove half of her skull. When Malia got out of ICU, doctors ordered that she wear a helmet for 12 to 24 months while she healed. But that was not People are always trying to chime in. According to records, three weeks earlier on July 10th, Bowen took Malia to the ER after she was throwing up blood. Doctors reported Malia was extremely lethargic. Malia was treated and sent home. The very next week, on July 28th, Malia was back in the hospital for a cut to her forehead. Medical professionals reported she had blood just outside of her brain. Neither parent was able to tell doctors what could have caused it. Bowen says she was hurt after falling from a chair. But medical professionals said that would not have caused the serious internal injuries. Doctors reported they were concerned about abuse. But in the end, the court found they could not confirm whether or not those injuries were caused by abuse. The CPS caseworker noted she had reason to believe there was neglectful supervision on Brittany Bowens' part. Care. So, so, let me just say this, not for nothing. The court papers that the fucking ACS, the CPS lady put in, right, said there was neglect. On the mother's behalf, right? So, why didn't CPS take the fucking child from the home and either give her to her grandmother or her father, which had been out of the house of the mother, right? Then, number two, why the fuck they didn't take them to court? Remember, the first injury happened when... When in August, so we're about to be. Uh, uh. Do you not realize the timeline and all of this shit? My thing is, why does it take people so long to process stuff? Because my thing is, as a caseworker, if I walk in and a child has bruises. And then I go to the hospital and she's getting all of this paperwork and I see all these injuries going on. I'm taking the child out the house. You got to go to court. Now, at some point along the line, I heard that the child was removed out of the house and then put back in the house. Why was the child? Why didn't the child father get custody of the child? That's the part I'm not understanding. And I need to find answers for that. That's why I had to come back. Plus, my phone had cut off. My feelings is so hurt for this little girl, yo. Because a lot of things did not have to happen to this sweet, precious little girl. This little girl did not have to go through all of this. All they had to do was take the mother to court and remove the kid. You remove the kid, but then you put her back in the care of her mother? Allegedly, like, who, where are we doing that at? All her injuries happened in that one home. So why is it that the mother gets the child back? Why the father couldn't get the child? What's so in his, his background that he couldn't get his daughter? That's the mystery. What's in the background of the grandmother that she couldn't get the daughter? 
Lots of people failed this child. CPS failed this child. Her mama first in line failed her. Her mother is the first one in line that failed her with them fake ass fucking tears. Then the grandmother. Then all these so-called big family that they so-called have. But yet, all I see is the mother and the grandmother. I really can't. Because the more and more I think about this case, the more and more I get mad. Y'all hear those babies in that background? Like I said, you harm them, you got to go. Because the first time when she said, oh, because he didn't come pick me up from the court and I didn't have my key, I went there. But what? You don't got your key? I'm banging the door all the way the fuck down. You bugging. You are bugging the fuck out. Oh, I thought he was in the parking lot of the airport, so I just waited. If he was supposed to come pick you up and there was no call, no show, bitch. Why are we call the cops? If you ain't hear from him and you trying to reach him and he not responding and he got your kids and you argue with him and then not a fuck that. I'm coming for mine. Bet to believe I'm coming for mine. Y'all got to be motherfucking crazy. This shit is out of fucking control with these kids. You have to keep an eye on your kids. Most importantly, you have to be aware of your kids' surroundings. It's no way in the fucking world that they was that little girl was supposed to be placed back in that house. And that's the problem. It was like CPS was doing their job, but somewhere along the line, they dropped the fucking ball. And bet the fucking believe it's cases like this. Because I live in New York City. Bitches call, bitches so fucking evil. They will call CPS on you just because. Trust me, I know very well. They will call CPS on you just because. And I know a lot of CPS workers in New York City don't like hard cases like this one that we are talking about. Because when they get cases, when they get an easy case, they like to latch on to that easy case. They don't like to do no paperwork. So when that caseworker there stumbled upon this little girl, she should have did her motherfucking job. Because she was already on scene. Homegirl should be fired. I don't know what the fuck is happening with the casework or whatever, but everybody should go to jail. Mama, the stepfather, he shouldn't even be, it shouldn't even be no bail in his case at all. Why the fuck does he get bail? Why was his bail reduced if he's seen on camera taking so-called evidence out of the house? Why? His stories don't add up. It's too many fucking stories. And y'all trying to tell me this shit is out of fucking pocket. Out of pocket. Out of fucking pocket. Like I said, my name is Eve the Weave. Like, share, and subscribe. And as this story unfolds, I promise you, I'll try to have all the details lined up. Because I'm not understanding for the life of me why her father or her grandmother couldn't get her after she was taken out of the house and then came. I, I don't, I don't. That's the part I'm not getting right there. That's when CPS dropped the ball. The mother already dropped the ball, but... CPS definitely dropped the ball. What was the point of you being there if you was going to drop the ball? My name is Eve the Weave. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit me in the comments. I'm not feeling this one today, people.